Good morning, church. Our scripture reading this morning is found in John 14, 13 and 14. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. And here Jesus is speaking to his disciples. And he says, you can ask for anything in my name and I will do it so that the Son can bring glory to the Father. Yes, ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. It's good to see you all. I was listening to uh, children's story. Have you noticed that when children's story, adults, they listen sometimes even, even more than children? I, I love children's stories. Uh, and when, when Marilyn asked about the house rules, children were quiet, probably thinking which one to say. And one came automatically to my mind. We have a house rules. The house rules, one of them, is when you come to our place, please take your shoes off. Okay? I remember back overseas when our children were small and they were, you know, crawling down and, uh, you know, like what little children do. I had issues to help some of our people to realize that they need to take shoes off. And I remember there was a young person who came once to our place and she came just in shoes and I polite, politely asked, if you could please take your shoes off. And her response was, why? This is not a holy land. Anyway, there is, there is some other rules, and I'm sure there is, there is rules in each house, but uh, um, by the way, I will perfectly understand if you don't come and shake hands with me. So uh, we are encouraged nowadays to do physical distance because of this virus that's going around. So, and if you would like really to be obedient to that rule, you can't have physical distance by shaking your hand. Is that true? So, uh, yeah, if you, if you don't want to, I'll perfectly understand. But if you, if you by any chance do, I would in encourage you to use these sanitizers that are provided. That's, that's the way how we keep each other safe and at the same time obeying the rules that, that we should support. All right. So... Thank you, Jeffrey, for sharing Bible verse from John chapter 14 with us. And I have chosen this verse for one particular reason. And that's the word anything. Have you noticed in both verses that Jeffrey has read for us? It says, if you ask, what? Anything in my name, I would do. Do you really believe this is the case? Do you really understand this Bible verse literally? Anything that we, that we ask. And if that is a literal, you know, that we can ask anything and Jesus will do, well, that's the offer that I believe nobody would like to refuse. So we have, when we read our Bibles, examples in the Bible, when people pray to God, and when God answered, there is many, many examples, and, and, and I'm sure that you know this. However, we have examples in the Bible where people ask, for some unusual things to happen. And God answered their prayers. 
Let me just remind you about a few of these, which we would call unusual prayer requests when God actually heard their prayers. They, we, we can see in the Bible they ask for anything and, and that's happened. If you remember in the book of Joshua chapter 10, there is one unusual request. The request that the Bible says that happened never before and never after that. So I, I know that some of you may already have a clue what I'm talking about. So in chapter 10, um, in, in the book of Joshua, verses 12 and 13, it says, chapter 12, Joshua, verses 12 and 13. And I'm using uh, New King James Version, Richard, if you would like to know. Uh, then Joshua spoke to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Sun, stand still over Gibeon, and moon, in the valley of Aijalon. And verse 13 says, So the sun stood still, and the moon stopped, till the people had revenge upon their enemies. Wow! What a prayer request. Sun stopped, and moon stopped. That was something that has never seen before, and not after that. So that was answer, direct answer on prayer. The other example that I can just mention is Daniel experience in uh, every child know this in the lion's den. When he was thrown there and he survived. He prayed to God and he came alive. So I know that some people, they can argue, and probably you heard some of the arguments when they say, ah, oh, look, they fed the lions before Daniel was chucked there. But I believe that actually God answered prayers of his, of his man, of Daniel. So we can read that about, uh, about that in Daniel chapter 6. The other one, uh, maybe a couple other ones that I would like to mention, unusual prayer requests. For example, when there was drought in Israel for three and a half years, you remember when, when Elijah was praying and when God listened to him and rain starts. And, and when talking about Elijah, if we read chapter 18 of the book of uh, 1 Kings, in chapter 18 we will see Elijah praying that fire comes from heaven. And, and, and I'm sure that you all know this. And fire came from heaven. Sometimes we need to pray more and more and more, you know, rain to come. But fire came from heaven. And that was direct uh, answer on Elijah's prayer. And maybe just the last one to mention in Acts chapter 12, when Peter was in prison, the church prayed for him and Peter came out of prison. There is amazing examples in the Bible how God listened and answer pre people's prayer. Not just ordinary prayer, but prayer that were really unusual. And God is the master of miracles. However, what's happened when you pray and pray and pray, but nothing happened? What is your personal experience with unanswered prayers? There is no doubt you are sincere. You are crying in your prayers. You are asking God for something, but there is still no results. I came quite recently, I would say, from overseas. It will be 14 years in August. And these things were one of the first 
things that I was interested to discover how it works. You know, just to give you a little bit, I grew up in a country where if you put these things on the street, when you come in the morning over the night, it will disappear. You know? <laughs> Probably only, only the cables will be left, you know, there, if. But here, I notice these vending machines are everywhere. So the only thing what you need to do is you need to choose what you want, if you are thirsty or if you would like a snack. Just put coin or two, press the button, here we go. You have. And of course, if you don't have money, you need to go to the, these machines, right, to put your card, assuming that there is something on your card to give you, you know, opportunity to, to, to uh, withdraw something. And within a second, oh, I'm not sure who will be able to take this amount, but anyway, money will be out. So, and there is another machine that uh, we use using quite often, especially when our own one is broken. We call them laundry machines, you know, uh, washing machines. The same principles apply. But I don't know, have you ever had experience with these machines when you feed them, when you give the money, and you found out that they, they don't work? So how do you feel then? So this man was trying to solve problem, or, 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 or the other one who was thirsty and was after his coffee, but machine just swallowed his money and he got nothing. So I'm talking today about prayers. And my question is, are we taking God sometimes in the same way or treating God sometimes in the same way that we would treat one of these machines that I just did mention. So let's listen and watch this short video with me. And apologize if music is a bit loud, please cover your ears. But, and try to understand, try to understand the message. Dear God, thank you for your goodness. Lord, I know you want me to be blessed and happy. And that's why, God, I pray you, please, let me have this Corvette I've been looking at. I really like it. And God, if it be your will, please make it cherry red. Amen. Lord, I'm single. And I'd really like to find that special someone. I kind of thought you'd have this problem figured out by now. Anyway, now is the time, Lord. Make it happen. Bring me a man. Lord, I know it is your desire to make your children happy. And I've got a situation here. Um, all of my neighbors have gotten in-ground pools. I'm the only one on the block that doesn't have one. God, you can do better than this. As you know, Lord, I just released my first album, and it's not getting the kind of attention I hoped for. God, I know that you are capable of anything. You're all-powerful. So please, Lord, Make my album trend. Make it trend, Lord, make it trend. Ignite social media with your holy fire so that I may be glorified in all I do. Amen. What's going on? 
Why isn't this working? Come on! I want this car! God, give it to me! Right now! Hello? <laughs> Hello? I don't understand! Where's my pool? Why is this not working? What is wrong with this thing? God, what are you doing? I want this! What is going on? I can't put it out in front of my friend! Are you kidding me? Come on, God! What am I supposed to do? Are you listening to me? Give me a break here! Oh, this is stupid! Oh, God! What is the matter? God, I want my car! Ugh, God, are you even listening to me? God, are you even listening to me? What do you do? And how do you personally feel? When you need something, whatever that is. When you pray, when you come regular to church, when you read your Bible daily, but you pray and nothing happens. I guess that these emojis can relate to some of your feelings, whether that's rejected, angry, confused, frustrated, whatever that is. I believe that some of us have these kind of feelings. So this morning, I would like to do something that I started doing this during, uh, quite recently, and it worked well in some of the churches. So I would like to give opportunity to my Rockhampton brothers and sisters to do something with me this morning. So all of you who have your phones here now, please take it out of your pocket. Those of you who don't, just be patient a little bit with us. It won't last long. And what I would like to do is to ask two simple questions. And those who have phones will have opportunity to answer on these two simple questions. And then we will see on the screen a response from Rockhampton Church. So uh, please use this code. Go to www dot menti dot com and put your code which is eleven zero four eight seven zero and if you can do that quicker then Richard will show us something on uh, I think that Richard you can play now okay just present have you ever had experience with unanswered prayers? So you will see a few options on the screen, or on your uh, phone, or, or whatever you got screens. So, and then, as you put your answer, we will see here. So we see that 78% out of 10, 11 people who are participating at the moment, or 82% says, yes, I do have experience with unanswered prayers. 8% of these 13 people, or 14 at the moment, says, most of my prayers are unanswered, which means, yeah, I pray, but most of them are not answered. And 6% of you says, God, answer most of my prayers. So we, we got 17 participants at the moment. So this is anonymous. I don't know who put what. But just give us opportunity to see what's happened here in our church, which 82% says, yes, I do have experience with unanswered prayers. And now the next question will be, I would like to ask you about your feelings. 
So Richard, if you can just change now slide, please. And the question is, how do you feel, is it? How do you, if you just go to the next slide, how do you feel when your prayer is not answered but you prayed sincerely? So put a few words. How do you feel about your feeling when you pray and your prayers are not answered? But please put in an appropriate language, okay? God knows the best. Mm -hmm. I like this. God knows why my prayers are not answered. I still wait patiently. Thank you, whoever put this. Try to be patient. But some of you are honest to say I feel frustrated. And look. Depressed, rejected, anxious, confused, sad, but I still have trust. I will finally understand, I guess, one day why God have not answered my prayers. At times confused, In God's time. Okay. All right. So this is something that gives us opportunity, each one of us, to participate this morning. And to share, actually, what is on our heart. How we personally feel when we pray, but when God doesn't answer our prayers. And I got a question for you. Do you always do whatever your own child asks you to do? Be honest with me. Yes or no? How many of you would say, yes, I do? I love my child so much that I will do anything he or she asks me. I can't see any hands. What's wrong? I remember when I was a little child, uh, I had obsession with trying to stick my two fingers in an electric socket on the wall. But you know what? In Europe, it's not like here in Australia. It's circle one that child can actually touch inside. So for whatever reason, because we are born as sinners or, or whatever reason is, I always try to put my fingers there. And back then, there was no covers, you know, that you can put near plastic and, you know, you are safe. Your child can't get it out. So I remember my mom, she used to put um, um, tape. But she needed always these things. And it was a bit frustrating, you know, to, to pull it and, and, and put the new tape again. And she was talking to me. If I see you doing that one more time, you know, we as children, we were not protected back then, you know. Uh, so, uh, that was my obsession. And I couldn't understand why my mom wouldn't let me do it. But you know what? I understand. A few years after that, I understood. And I believe in the same way when it comes to our prayers, we may not understand immediately why God is waiting, why he is not answering. But apparently time will come when we will understand. So, this morning I mentioned from the Bible few examples where people prayed unusual prayers, not just ordinary prayers. I didn't even mention ordinary prayers. But unusual prayers and God heard them. But... Some prominent people from the Bible, they pray to God, and God, it seems that didn't answer their prayers. 
One of them is the Apostle Paul. I don't know how many of you are aware that Paul had some um, eye disease. And the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 8 and 9, that Paul actually prayed not once, but how many times? Three times. And what was the answer? Yes? My grace is sufficient for you. So he didn't heal him. Even though I believe that Paul was sincerely praying to God for that issue. Because uh, the scholars, theologians, they believe that what Paul had, that was awful, you know, like to see. It was not pleasant to be around him because of that eye disease that he had. And, and he, of course, he would like to get rid of it. But God said, not my grace is sufficient for you. The other one is um, Joseph. I love stories of Joseph. So from Genesis chapter four, uh, 37, you know the story. He was a favorite child. His brothers, they didn't like him. And he even wore the special coat. So Joseph, as you know, he ended up in the pit. What do you think when Joseph was down on the bottom and his brothers were up eating together? What do you think Joseph was doing? I believe that he was sincerely praying to God. God, please get me out of this pit. I would like to go home. I, I don't even like anymore to spend time with, with my brothers because they, they obviously hate me. But I would like to go home and to be with my father. Please, Lord. What was God's response? At the time when Joseph hoped that his prayers were answered and when they took him out of the pit, he was just taken out to, be, to go to Egypt. But what's happened when he was in Egypt? I believe that he was still praying to God, God, I would like to go home. And instead to go home, where did he end up? In jail. And what do you think he was, he was doing in jail? I believe that he was sincerely praying and said, God, everyone knows that I am not supposed to be here except you. So why I'm still here? Please, I would like to go home. Moses, you know the story of Moses. He was man of God. He led Israelites towards the promised land. And then when he came to the edge of the promised land, was he allowed to go there? No. <laughs> Lord, can you imagine that, you know? What would be the greater pleasure for him than to come where he was going for such a long time with his people? But God said, you will see, but you will not get it there. That reminds me of, of my bread story, you know, if someone, you know, if I was making nice sourdough, you know, and put in the, in the oven, you know, and, and fresh, you know, smell comes and I, I can't wait, you know, to, to, to eat that bread. And then someone said, no, 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 you will not eat it. You will just look at it. And that was the Moses story. He looked, but he wasn't allowed to come into the promised land. I did mention this man before. He had a special prayer request, and that prayer wasn't answered. So who can tell me what was the prayer request of Elijah? Lord, I want to what? To die. I want to die. And we know that his prayer wasn't answered. How about Jesus? Can you imagine Jesus praying? And he said, if you remember in Matthew chapter 26, Lord, uh, Father, I pray that this cup may pass me. It wasn't something enjoyable that he experienced. It was agony. And he sincerely prayed to God, Father, if it's possible, 
But what I love about Jesus, and I would like to invite uh, and to remind each one of us, when Jesus prayed, he said what? Not my will, but your will. Be Father. So, why God doesn't answer sometimes our prayers that we sincerely pray? When I came to one of the districts before, as I'm doing now, I go and visit people. And I was surprised when I spent some time with a person that I visited. It was nice conversation. We spoke about God. We spoke about Bible. But then, just before I was going to go, I said, look, and my assumption was, that's something that every pastor should do and uh, with church members before we go. Let's have a prayer together. But he said, no. I don't want you to pray. And I look. I said, what's wrong? And he said, yeah, I'll probably tell you the other day, the next, next time, but my experience with prayer is not good. When I pray, he said, exactly opposite happen of what I pray. Probably I should put that, that uh, question up on the screen. Have you ever prayed and something opposite happened? So that man was hurt. He was praying sincerely to God, he said. But happened actually quite opposite of what he prayed. So why God? Why God doesn't answer some of our prayers? And I would like to share a few, few thoughts that we may consider when we, when we pray to God. First, we are asking sometimes the things that God, that God never promised that will be. You remember when Jesus prayed for, our, for his disciples, for us, in John chapter 17, he said, I'm not asking that you take them from the world. But what he was asking? He was asking that he look after us on this world. So Job said, if you pray for, to be trouble free, that's not good prayer. Because as long as we are here on this earth, we'll, we'll deal with some issues. Job said in his books, a man born of women is short age and full of trouble. So that's our life. If, if our life was perfect on this earth, we didn't have any issues, who would like to go where, uh, where God prepared? So perhaps that's one of the reasons that sometimes our prayers are not answered. The second thing to answer some prayers would be against his nature. What I mean by that? I was confused for, 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 for some time coming to, to Grace Mia, where I live now, when I go on Capricorn Highway, sometimes says 60, and sometimes says 80. And I was thinking, what's, what's wrong with me, with me? I think that that was, that was 80 the other day. Then I figured out, actually, that they're changing the, the uh, signs all the time. They just put... When they're working, they put 60. When they're not working, they put 80, which is great. I love it. But have you ever had experience when you drive in a zone where it's supposed to be 100 or even 110, and you see sign says 40? And then you, okay, it says road work, slow down, to 40. And then you look around, no one is working, you know. But the sign is still there. Are you tempted to do something? Where's my wife? <laughs> you know what? I must say, I was so tempted and I press, you know, like, I, actually I didn't reduce the speed. But I clearly saw the sign. But I prayed. I said, dear Lord, you know that this is nonsense. <laughs> and I would like to pray that I avoid 
police today. And you know what? As soon as I, as I said that prayer within myself, I was so embarrassed because that's so selfish. And that's something that God, that it would be against God's nature to answer that kind of prayer. So sometimes we pray these kind of prayers. We need to learn that prayer is relationship, not a wish list. And I think out of all this that I did mention, when we talk about prayer, I would like you to remember, brothers and sisters, prayer is relationship with God. Not a wish list. Not a vending machine, you know. I, I will pray, you will answer me, and then I'll go my way, and then when I need you again, I'll come back and I'll pray and you will hear me. That's what we do with vending machines. When I need you, you will be there, I will offer prayer and you will offer me answer. Prayer is relationship, not a wishing machine. Wish machine, a wish list. So God has something better for us sometimes. And I love something that someone, one of you or two of you put on the screen. We need to trust and wait. So I, I know each one of us praying for something. We would like to see our answers sooner rather than later. But I would like to encourage you this morning to keep praying and keep trusting in the Lord. Because the answer will apparently come. Not at your time, but at God's time. At the time when it's best for you. And the last one, the reason that we don't see answers is because we give up too soon. I remember... Uh, preaching the, the same message in one of, of my previous churches and there was a little boy sitting in the front and drawing something. And You know what? We sometimes assume that kids, they don't listen. No, they are sponges. They listen a lot better than adults, even though they seem to be busy doing something. And, and then I ask, what we would need to do, do if our pray prayers are not answered? And Mason, that was his name, you know, he lifted his hand immediately, he left everything, what he was doing, and he said, we need to keep praying. Good on you. Well done. And that's something that we need each one of us to do. We need to keep praying and trusting to God. Okay. What would happen if God answered prayers of those people that we'd mentioned? We know, I did mention what they were praying for. But what would happen if God answered prayers of Joseph in a way that he asked him to, to, to answer? Lord, take me out of this pit. I would like to go home. What would happen to Joseph? What would happen with God's people, with the Israelites? They would starve from hunger. That, that would be it. But God is his, in his providence, in his love. He had a plan for Joseph, even though he couldn't understand. But God sent him, him to Egypt, not just to save his life, but to save the life of his family. Isn't that true? And you remember in Genesis chapter 50, when we read Genesis chapter 50, when finally he faced brothers, he said, you meant evil to me. But God... He meant good. And because of you, he sent me ahead. So, finally Joseph was able to see that his prayers were answered. Though not in a way that he expected. But in a way that he would choose if he could see the end from the beginning. What would happen if God decided to answer Moses' prayer to let him come into the promised land. You remember what's happened with people, with God's people in, when, when they reach the promised land? Probably what's happened even today when, when lives go smooth for, for, for Christians. Many of them, they forgot about God. They forget about God. But we know that God answered Moses' prayers because where is Moses now? Tell me. He's in heaven. How about this man, Elijah. Lord, I would like to die. Where is Elijah now? He is in heaven as well. And most important, my brothers and sisters, 
what would happen to you and to me if Jesus didn't face what he did and if the cup that he was praying about passed him? What would happen with you and with I? I think that we all know the answer. We wouldn't have eternal or everlasting life. And I would like to thank God for choosing to answer our prayers in a way that is best for us. I would like to suggest as I finish today the message. There is a verse in, in, in a Psalm which says, be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for him to act. Wait patiently. Because as Paul says in Romans, God do all things for the good of those who believe in him. So never give up. Just believe and trust in the Lord. And I'm sure that sooner or later you will see that God actually answered all of your prayers for his glory and for the blessings of yours. And I would like to thank God for doing that. Amen.